the tricky topics of geography, the geographical thought. It gives sleepless nights. So I hope some of these videos at least put some ghosts to rest. So discussing uh, quickly, this is not the detailed study of geographical thought, but enough short, short videos, a few minutes, they help you quickly recap the concepts. Okay, but ultimately you have to go into the more details eventually. So I'm discussing quantitative revolution here, a very important phase, a phase uh, where geography kind of uh, totally transformed itself. Uh, this is referred to as the second most important paradigm phase. The first paradigm phase that we had was when we had the uh, works of Radzl and his concept of new determinism that in many ways was the beginning of the paradigms in geography. The geography was being developed along the thought of environmental determinism. So that's the new geography of Germany. So that's often considered as to be the first paradigm in geography and this may be considered as the second most important paradigm in geography. The major thinking. Now, this was what's happening to geography in the 40s and 50s. Of course, it has started from 30s. And the man who is officially given the credit to have started it is Schaffer. Schaffer and his book, Exceptionalism in Geography. So, Schaffer was very upset about geography being developed as chorology. Geography being developed as regional uh, uh, approach science, where he thought confining geography to descriptive methods, confining geography okay, to merely describing the details and not taking the discussions toward generalization was robbing geography of its status as a logical science. And he had support of people, of course, they came much later, people like Ackerman, uh, who had said that geography in the ideographic approach, geography trying to becoming a exceptional subject different from others was getting isolated so geography kind of was getting big and becoming very different from the sciences like sciences should have been which in Schaffer's word is a subject that uses mathematical modeling statistical methods uses generalizations Okay, develop some kind of conclusions which are valid across time and space. So Schaffer is upset about that. So again, this phase is, a, is essentially telling us what geography ought to be. This is trying to define that geography should be uh, the spatial science. And here the word spatial is not an innocent uh, alternative of the word called space. The, here the word uh, spatial means many things. Spatial as a direct challenge to Hartshorn's aerial. Spatial as like a countering the original paradigm of Hartshorn and his predecessors like Hetner and the rest. So here spatial is the science approach that uses the methods of mathematics, that uses the methods of natural sciences, of economics, of statistics to develop generalizations. So it says use of methods from mathematics and natural sciences. So this is what geography was trying to become according to Schaffer. Now who are the major proponents of this? So we have David Harvey, a very, very important contributor who eventually also converts into one of the very powerful radical geographers. He starts getting the radicalism into geography influenced by the Marxist tradition. So we know about David Harvey. Peter Haggett, he wrote the famous book Location Analysis in Geography, in Human Geography. So he develops a technique how okay, phenomena and elements can be studied using principles of systems approach and elements of geometry. So this is Peter Haggett. The works of William Mungi, this man again was another very important proponent of quantification. But again, like David Harvey, he ultimately shifts towards radical approach again. And this has been a common trend. Many quantifiers and many of those who were big supporters of uh, using mathematical models, they got disillusioned with the mechanical treatment of geography. 
So eventually some of them converted themselves as Marxists and radical geographers by the time it is 1970s. So four or five names that you should know and what, what were the important contributions under QR. So we had of course Peter Haggett's location analysis. We had a lot of normative theories coming up. Okay, and if you remember normative theories, these theories try to ignore value laden concepts. They are into extreme positivism. They are into extreme objectivity. Anything which is subjective is discarded as negative and not scientific. So a lot of normative theories. Okay, and we have know about the works of Kristaller and his central place theory. Systems approach. The, the works of uh, 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 BGL Berry, Richard Shorley. Okay, um, they came up with the kinds of systems and they used these models in human geography. So a lot of uh, uh, systems analysis was done uh, for urban, urban studies in particular. So this is what the approach was. Now the criticisms I believe you know, I'm revising it for you. Uh, uh, geography was becoming mechanical, geography was ignoring man. Geography gets alienated from man environment studies. There is overuse of generalizations, there is overuse of mathematics into geography and sometimes seemingly absurd ideas like social physics. You are deliberately dragging in okay, principles of physics and gravitation to explain human aspects. Some of them considered that to be too extreme, a case of application of logical sciences. And then of course, some considered this was more like a fad of fashion. Okay, rather than the requirement of using mathematics and geography, it was more like okay, a compulsion of the scientific okay, a community where geography unnecessarily was getting into an area where it should not have been. So we had Burton who summed up a lot of criticisms. But the primary criticism was it was getting dehumanized. It was ignoring man's role. It was treating man as a mechanical being, okay, mechanically reacting to stimulus rather than applying himself as a part of the man environment, okay, ecosystem relationships. So that's more or less the summary of the quantitative revolution. Now one point you may add about QR is that this was inspired by economics. This was inspired by a lot of scientific positivism. And in many ways, this is considered to be the outcome of modernism in geography. Uh, modernism where science is definitely very popular. But along with science, there is a lot of pro-capitalism that comes in. So if you look at the American and the European schools, okay, as uh, uh, the, the consequence of uh, what is otherwise called as the Enlightenment project of Europe. A very important movement. Okay, from this Enlightenment project where the focus was more on okay, science and objectivity and positivism, the, the, the natural consequence was the rise of economic models like capitalism which were around labor and the rest. So QR phase okay, is sometimes considered as the extension and representative of modernism in geography and QR phase continued in it in another avatar it continued in another form in the behavioral revolution also so and it was uh, because of this modernism approach that we have lot of backlash the backlash otherwise called as the critical revolution which uh, if you want to club into a movement, the backlash against QR modernism is what's called as postmodernism. Postmodernism kind of deconstructs this whole obsession with okay, objectivity, science, obsession with capitalism. It looks as reorienting entire economic systems. And the form of postmodernism, which is highly uh, a rebellious of these systems was Marxist ideology, but even postmodernism in some ways was opposed to Marxism because Marxism in its classical form was not really 
uh, inclusive of the spatial approach. So, um, we have used too many terms, just remember this thing, that there is an approach called as modernism and this modernism was countered by postmodernism. QR represents modernism and postmodernism is radical approaches. Postmodernism was challenging the scientific rationality using mathematical objectivity popular of the QR phase. Okay, so postmodernism is like that type of a challenge to the modernist school. So we have the works of uh, uh, Deer, the works of Soja who become popular in postmodernism. So uh, I always tell my students, and I'll repeat that for you, that we write an answer in geographical thought. You got to know four or five things, broad heads. I, I, I call that as the five point formula or the 10 point formula depending upon what is the scope and the marks that you are writing. So as a five point formula, you got to know the names and the books. You got to know the scope of what is being discussed. So know the name of the geographer with the books he has contributed. Know the definition of the concept and explain the concept. You have to know who were the, who were, what were the debates around it. Okay, the criticism debates, uh, you should know what were the contributions and what were the fallouts, what were the consequences. So these four or five points, broad heads, capture the QR uh, in a fair uh, summary form which helps you revise. And if you want to read up something on this, uh, a nice read up is chapter number five and I'll suggest read up the first two pages. Okay, first two pages and this discussion ultimately spills over into the discussion which was the Schaeffer Hartshorn debate. Okay, how uh, Schaeffer kept on insisting on spatial science approach while Hartshorn resisted him although unsuccessfully with his aerial differentiation and regional paradigm. So that's QR. You may uh, pause the video, look at the screen, take some jottings and thereafter get into the proper notes. Thank you.